Hello friends, welcome back to another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Again, it's been a while. Life keep getting in the keeps getting in the way, and I wasn't able to fly at all. Even even for myself, regardless of whether I'm able to record a video or not, but I'm back. So we are going to revisit the DC3, and the reason we are doing this is I received a couple questions after publishing my DC3 video about the ILS needle, the glide slope needle rather, and how I get it to working. Actually, I didn't do anything special, but in this video, I'm going to try to cover that and show you guys uh, the ILS needle. It's working and we will do an ILS landing to Birmingham. We are currently at Doncaster parked and ready to start the engines and we will do that very quickly and be on our way but before doing so let me share the flight plan with you I used a little nav map to plan this flight and I did a test flight so you will see a trail but here it is so we are here at Doncaster as you see we will depart from runway 20 follow uh, heading of 197 and then after flying runway heading for a while we'll do a right turn towards Trent VOR 115.7 and after Trent VOR a slight right turn again to 241 until this point and then we'll make a left turn to 147 to intercept the Hanela VOR which will take us towards Birmingham and hopefully we will pick up the ILS signal and execute an IL execute an ILS landing to runway 15. So that's the plan. And we are going to get going very quickly. Let's go back and jump into the cockpit and power up the aircraft. We are in the cockpit of the DC3. Remember, first things first. We need to get some hydraulic power pressure to operate the cowl flap. So cranking the hand pump a couple times, that will give us some hydraulic pressure. And then we can use that to open our cowl flaps for engine start. So that's one. The mixture goes full, uh, the prop levers go full forward. And then the fuel tanks, we will select the right and left main tanks. I'm using my controller for that. There we go, and the mixture goes to fully rich, and we will crack open the, the throttles to get some uh, fuel into the engines. Next up, we'll turn our battery master to on, we'll put our position lights to on, and we'll go over here, turn our left magneto to on, left booster pump to on, and start, put the starter to left engine. And we will wait for the starter to energize. As you are hearing, now it's energizing the left engine. When we start to hear a steady sound like this, or after 10-15 seconds, we will put the left engine mesh on. And after 5-7 to seven seconds, we will put the left primer and that should hopefully start our engine. No, it didn't. Okay, let's do this one more time. Energize. Oh, it started. Never mind. These things do happen in this aircraft time to time. Not sure why. We will continue with the right engine and see if we can start right engine properly. Let's turn off the left booster pump and put right booster pump to on. And we'll put the right magneto to both. And move the starter to right to energize the right engine. Should see fuel flow. There we go. And that is good enough. Let's mesh. 
and put the right primer on and hopefully this will get the engine started no it didn't, okay let's do this again That should be good enough. Mesh and primer. There we go. Our right engine is running as well, so let's put the booster pump back to off position. We'll put the inverter to on and then we will worry about the rest and we are ready. We are using a weather preset because right now the weather is very nasty around the UK and I don't want to fly with high crosswinds or high winds. That's why we are using it. So let's put our call flaps to trail. Let's check our T's and P's. Oil pressure is looking good. Fuel pressure is looking good. Oil temperature is increasing so it will take a little bit more to get it to warm up. But we are looking good. Altimeters are set and we are ready to taxi to the runway. So, parking brake is disengaged. Oh, before moving, let's close the doors. I keep forgetting about this and now we can go and find the runway. Runway should be on our right, so we'll do a slight right turn here. into this narrow taxiway I'm not sure if this is a taxiway but I will use it anyway so bear with me for a second we will go over here and the main taxiway is right there that will take us to runway 2-0 everything is looking good I will probably it's a good idea to set our gyro pilot to the heading that we will be flying which is 197 as we will be using the gyro pilot. All right, that's too much. That's roughly 197. Let's cut the throttles and get on the main taxiway. We are getting close to the runway. So we will turn our landing lights to on. Pedo heat and prop the icer in case we have icing conditions and let's line up and take off we'll do a no flaps take off or flaps up take off so i'm trying to line up a little bit better this looks okay to me we'll hold the brakes go and lock the tailwheel Tail wheel is locked, landing lights are on. Yeah, all is looking good. So what we will do is, let me check one more thing. Carb heat, we are probably not going to need it. Boost pumps on for takeoff. We will increase the throttles to about 45 inches of manifold pressure and rotate around 70 miles per hour. So that's the plan and we will probably apply some rudder to keep her on the center line when the tail starts lifting. So applying or moving the throttles slowly, increasing the throttles, we should see the aircraft moving. Alright, beautiful sounds. Power is now set. Tail should be lifting anytime now. There we go, applying some left rudder to keep her on the center line. Uh, passing 80, 
gently pulling back and we are up in the air. We'll fly the runway heading and trim for a steady climb. Positive rate, gear is coming up. And just flying the runway heading or the heading we planned 197 or close. Alright. We I can I believe we can make a use of the gyro pilot, so let's turn on the master and push the rudder switch in and that should keep the gyro pilot and we should be able to maintain a steady climb of 500 feet or so per minute with the gyro pilot alright let's clean the aircraft up pull the uh, prop levers back to 2500 rpm manifold pressure to about 40 inches Okay, and the mixtures to auto lean. And that should give us a good climb speed. And we will climb up to about, I don't know, 5,000, 6,000 feet. Let's keep climbing though. That's good enough. And we will tune our frequencies that we are going to follow. First one is 115.7, so let's go up. By the way, we forgot the transponder. 115.7 is the Trent VOR, and 113.65 is the Hanula VOR. So 113.65 on the NAV2 and 115.7 on standby as a backup. So, VRP already picking up the signal and looks like the VOR is on our right. We will make a right turn using the gyro pilot. and get back on course and you will see the needle moving when this is upright that means we are following the VOR alright let's get back onto the course that we planned 11197 and that should put us on course with the VOR We need to adjust the heading to 197 and that should get the needle to where it needs to be. So that looks like close and which means we need to turn to the right a little bit more to intercept the needle. So we'll do a slight right turn while climbing. We could have climbed, we can climb a little bit faster, but I think I'm fine with the current climb rate. Uh, we'll, we'll keep this. And the needle is actually coming along. You see that? should turn right a little bit more and intercept the course but let's just adjust course needle
so we do the heading should be two three one okay now we are getting back on course let's keep turning right until we intercept I forgot that we had to take a slight like a right turn but now we are we are going to be back on track now so when the needle is coming towards the center we will set the heading to 231 Uh, we should be very close now. So let's set our heading back to 231. We are still climbing. And we should be on track. This needs to be upright. And then we... Yeah, we're looking good. Actually, we are right on track to Trent VOR and climbing at 500 feet per minute we can climb a little bit faster this should do and then we will probably level off around 5000 feet pm dropped a little bit let's move the rpm forward to 2500 that should help us maintain the speed and the pressure to 40 inches yep that should do and we should be good so we are tracking the VOR just fine as you see that's upright this is the second frequency which is the Han in the VOR I'm pretty sure we are not picking up any signal just yet We will keep this heading, slight adjustments, and then we should be fine. This is not super precise, as long as you keep it at the center and this needle upright, you should be fine navigating to where you need to go. Right, for some reason this is not working. I can't control the pitch. I'm not sure if this happened after an update or what. But it seems not to work, so let's not worry about it. I can always disconnect the gyro pilot, set the trim and then engage the gyro pilot which will maintain the, the trim that we have. We are coming up to 5000, so we should slowly reduce the descent uh, um, climb speed and level of around 5000 I will probably stop the video when we level off until we get close to trend VOR and then I will come back to discuss what we are going to do next so far so good We are almost at 5000, so let's level off. That should do. Alright, maintaining level flight. 37 inches of manifold pressure, 38, that is fine. 25, 2400 RPM is going to be okay. 
and we'll keep this until we get to trend VOR that's what we are doing now and that is very close so I might even keep you guys here until we pass over that VOR because we will be turning to the right slightly to 241 after passing the VOR and this needle should flip and show backwards beautiful uh, preset weather as I said the current live weather is not ideal to record a video and explain things because crosswinds are getting in the way but we should be fine let's get some instrument panel lights and the compass light I like this uh, tinted red color and we should be we should be getting to cl close to trend VOR I'm not sure why we are slightly climbing but not maintaining the altitude but that is fine it's within the error margin so we should be okay alright all looking good we can enjoy the beautiful wheel of United Kingdom it looks awesome in Microsoft Flight Simulator we can open the windows too we are not too high but that will make the cockpit too loud I guess alright still on track looking good and we are getting close to the trend we are we will follow like this you can take a look oh by the way I forgot to turn off the boost pumps and the landing lights we'll do that now alright that should save us some fuel so far so good and unfortunately we don't have a DME equipment on board so we have to watch the needles to see when we are overhead this needle should flip backwards and that's when we are going to start our turn to 241 to follow outbound Trend VOR and then we'll take a look at the next frequency to see if we are receiving the signal from uh, on the VOR it looks like we are this is the needle so if this needle moves as we turn that means we are also picking up the signal from the Hanali VOR on 13.65 but that's how I navigate using the radio navigation use two nav radios to know where I am and uh, apply the heading according to my flight plan to get where I need to be all right the needle started moving slightly that means we might be close to the trend VOR and if it starts moving out that means we are about to pass over the VOR after trend I think I'm gonna cut the video and bring you guys back when we are ready to fly the ILS I just want to show what happens when we pass the VOR. Slight adjustments to our heading. The needle started moving out, which means we are super close to the new VOR and almost overhead I would say it keeps moving out as you see slowly that means we are about to pass the VOR and this is also moving so it should point backwards to state that now we are flying outbound yep we are definitely over the VOR that's why this needle is moving like that and it will come back to the center when we pass and this will flip which it is doing right now slowly and it will speed up as we pass over the VR 
and that means we need to start turning to 241 as you see it's turning and this end should be the one pointing to 241 when we completely get away from the VOR and start flying outbound So far, so good. We are looking good. We need to turn a little bit to the left to make this needle upright. And then get back on 241. Also, as we fly away, as the distance increases between the aircraft and the VOR, this needle will correct itself. Uh, it's all the radio and equip navigation equipment and how they are working. As you see, it's, it's correcting slowly. Yeah. Right, this should get us. Back on track to two four one. Things like corrections following the needle. Alright, just making slight adjustments, but I'll cut the video here, bring you guys back when we are ready to fly the ILS, and we'll take a look at the glide slope needle. See you in a little bit. Welcome back, friends. We are about to make the turn. As you see, the second needle is almost perpendicular to the first one. So that's when that happens, we are gonna start turning to left heading 147 and that should put us uh, towards Hanale VOR and the ILS while we are waiting here so let's tune the ILS to standby 110.1 and I think it is getting close for us to make the turn it is almost perpendicular but we will sl uh, slowly start turning to the left to heading 147 here in a little bit okay that's the VOR and we need to track that heading which is 15 Four seven or close. Right, time to turn slowly to one four seven or one five ish. We'll also come back on the throttles to thirty inches to slow the aircraft down and come back on the RPM a little bit to 
give ourselves a little bit more time to get back on track with the VOR. I think I'm gonna keep this heading for a little bit until that needle is entered and now we can switch the frequency and keep the ILS on standby and make it active on the NAV2 radio okay so we will keep keep it like this and then we will adjust the course to 147 that should fix our needle so that is roughly 147 and as you see we are very close as we fly like this it should get back to the center slightly turn to right to intercept and that should get us in line with the needle and that's the ILS so ILS signal is also picked by the aircraft we should start our descent right now at about five seven hundred feet per minute like so we should get down to 2500 coming back on the throttles even more to slow the aircraft to get ready for ALS Twenty two thousand rpm 25 inches of manifold pressure that should give us the time that we need to descend down to 2500 we can always increase the descent rate if we want to but that wouldn't be necessary the needle is moving so we need to make a slight left turn to get back on track and keep these needles upright that's what I'm trying to do here okay that looks good and we should stay like this final approach course is 146 so let's stay at that course that will give us the, the ILS and we can also use it because it's now showing so why not uh, we'll make the change so now we are tracking the ILS with our main needle and making slight adjustments to get back on track we are coming down to 3000 so 500 to go and then we will level off and the aircraft should slow down when we do that all right so far so good three thousand feet almost beautiful scenery around us the needle so as you see the glide slope needle is also picking up the glide slope signal and the ILS needle is also there we should be fine we need to keep turning left slightly to get the needle back on center Let's get back on the ILS. The needle started coming towards the center. Alright, that should give us a good... Oh, we passed below 2500, so let's pull. 
climb back or wreck the aircraft we fly the correct heading alright that's a little bit too much let's level off here and we should pick up the ILS signal alright this should get us back to where we need to be left turn trying to keep this needle upright the glide slope needle should guide us down towards uh, the approach all right left and right turns here to keep the needle at the center we need to turn more to the left until that needle is centered okay, that looks okay let's get back to the final approach course of 146, 145 and that should center this needle that needle Alright, it's moving towards the center. We are on right track. Now we are looking for a visual of the runway. We are slightly descending, which I don't want, so we should maintain level flight. Let's trim the aircraft for level flight, like so. And now we are looking outside, trying to see the runway. It should be somewhere in front of us. We might be off by a couple degrees, which according to this we are. It should sort itself out. The left turn here, just to stay on horse. small corrections but as I said this is not super precise so you need to follow the needle and then have a visual of the runway and that should get you where you need to be for landing what we will do is we will slow the aircraft down as much as we possibly can so coming back on the throttles even more to 20 inches mixture is going fully rich and props should go full forward momentarily when we see the glide slope needle moving try to center this a little bit more and get back on the runway track just a little bit more should be on the runway track now. I'm still not seeing the airport. The sun is too bright, but we will eventually get there. Alright, now correcting. And hopefully the needle will center. Still not seeing the runway, but the glide slope, we are on the glide slope, so we should start descending about 500 feet per minute and expect to see the runway very shortly. Let's keep slowing down, cut the throttles down to 10 inches or 15 inches. PM goes full forward now. And the aircraft should start following. We are a little bit off on the glide slope but we should get back on it and I'm trying to get a visual of the runway still no sign hopefully we will get a visual before it's too late uh, glide slope seems to be okay we are off a little bit but that's fine 
we will eventually take control and play ourselves in manually and for landing we will slow down and when we touch down uh, we will release the for back pressure on the control column and then apply brakes to keep her on the ground and avoid bouncing and we'll see if I can do a better landing I think that's the runway right there so I'm gonna disconnect the gyro pilot fly towards the runway yep that's definitely the runway so we will get back on runway track we are a little bit high so we should descend a little bit faster but that is the runway and we should now follow the puppies to guide us down and I put one level of flaps I'm gonna now focus looking outside cut the throttles even more towards 10 inches of manifold pressure drop the landing gear that should slow us down even more and maintain this and slow the aircraft down we should have slowed down a little bit earlier this is not ideal but well so be it let's stay on profile and we are on profile and the glide slope needle is roughly reflecting that so I am adding more flaps now and trying to stay on the center line and follow the puppies into the runway all right we are coming down getting ready to cut the throttles and one thing I'm gonna do very quickly is unlock the tail wheel oops cut the throttles sorry taking your eyes off the runway is not good okay we touched down and the tail should come down differential braking to keep her on the ground a little bit swings to the left and right but we should be fine now applying brakes all right all right not the best landing but we at least didn't bounce all right looks like we are down should keep a little bit of throttle to get off the runway landing lights again not the greatest landing but this time we didn't bounce and I think if I read correctly the developer of this aircraft agrees that there are some issues with the flight model so hopefully they will be fixed in the near future anyway welcome to Birmingham and as you have seen the light slope needle is working that was the purpose so we'll open the call flaps now while we are on the ground and follow the next taxiway into the parking or gates all right that's our turn let's cut the throttles a little bit and start turning towards this taxiway and slow down briefly okay and we'll find the parking spot a random place to park the, uh, the aircraft that right side looks okay to me so I will probably go there following this slight left into the terminal and I will try to make a right turn from here slow down and go over there and find ourselves a parking spot it's a bit tight turn overshot that turn a little bit it's fine tail draggers are hard to control on the ground and they are hard to land still trying to learn and gather some best practices as you have seen for the second time I am not great at 
flying a tail dragger or landing a tail dragger, but this time we didn't bounce. So I think unlocking the tail wheel makes a lot of sense. We'll take this right if this guy uh, gets away. Doesn't bother us. We'll take this right turn. The aircraft somewhere over here. Just a little bit more to the forward. And a flying brakes slightly. And set the parking brake. And we are ready to kill the engines. So mixture is coming back to idle cutoff. And now open. The doors, inverters are off. Uh, Pedo heat, prop the icer off. Landing lights are off. Position lights, we can keep on. We can turn them off as well. Magnetos to off. Position lights to off and batteries are off eventually. All right, welcome to Birmingham. I hope you guys enjoyed the flight. Uh, we managed to make it here with not too much problem. The landing was not ideal again, but hopefully with an update, this aircraft will become better. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving a like. And if you are stumb if you are not a channel subscriber but stumbled upon this video. Please do take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything, but it supports the channel a lot. I appreciate you, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.